Let's install a pocket door. I'm a big fan of these Johnson brand kits. The rough opening needs to be 84 and a half inches tall and the width is two times the door plus one inch. I make a mark on both jams at 81 and a half inches measuring up off the subfloor. Then I drive a nail at the center of the jam, leaving it protruding an eighth inch on both sides. This hardware kit says do not remove, but I like to remove it and put it in a safe place for later, including these little rollers because they have a tendency to get lost or damaged during the drywall process. Depending on your door size, you may have to trim your kit, but they give you all the door sizes clearly marked out for you. Next, slip both ends of the header end plates over the nails. Using my speed square, I make sure the end plates are straight and go ahead and drive the nails in tight. Now I add three screws to the passage side of the header, then before screwing the pocket door side, I use my level to make sure the header is level. If the header isn't level, the door might roll open or shut on its own. I snap two lines on the subfloor, even with the side jams. Butting the first stud against the header above, I use a level to plumb down. Then I make a mark on the floor. I screw the first floor plate down against the mark. This kit is designed for 2x4 walls, but I'm going to modify it to work with our 2x6 wall. I center the second floor plate between the first one and the other side of the jam. These steel studs that slip over the floor plates will be used to attach drywall. To modify this kit so it will work in our 2x6 wall, I drill 5 1 8 inch holes spaced evenly from top to bottom in each steel stud. I slide the steel stud over the floor plate and push it against the header above. Then I attach the stud to the header using the pan head screws provided in the kit. Earlier I had ripped some 1 inch by 1 and a half inch wide strips of wood to fur out the metal studs. Using the holes I drilled, I screw through the back of the metal stud to attach the wood strips. Adding one inch to both sides of the pocket door kit gives me the exact width I need for a 2x6 wall. Johnson does make a kit for 2x6 walls, but all the suppliers in our area were out of them. On the studs for the other side, I attach the furring strip to the studs before I install them since there's not enough room to fit my driver between the studs on both sides. Just like the first two, I slide these over the floor plates and attach them to the top using the pan head screws provided in the kit. I also put a one inch strip over the passage side of the header on both sides. Now the drywall can be easily hung and screwed to these wood furring strips. After drywall, I will reinsert the hangers that roll on the track above. They have two wheels on one side and one on the other. I make sure to alternate them when I put them in the track. These two plates get screwed to the top of the door, two and three quarter inches in, one on each side. Once they're installed, they latch to the rollers above. They also provide this little wrench that adjusts the hanger up and down so the door can be leveled. Now this door is framed and ready for drywall. Once the drywall is hung, we'll trim out the opening and hang the door. Let me know what questions you have.